anyways, I'm not even going to talk about Trump right now. Hey folks, this is hashtag go right with Peter Boykin. There's a lot of news to talk about and little time, but we're going to talk about Donald Trump's rally uh, at the RNC, his speech, and some other important news today on hashtag go right with Peter Boykin. I think it's time for us to go right. That's exactly where I heard him come from. What did you see, sir? Uh, I heard the shots. Um, I, uh, I thought it was firecrackers to begin with. Uh, somebody over there was screaming, he's been shot, he's been shot. So I made my way over. Uh, I said, I'm an emergency department physician. Let me help you. The guy had spun around, was jammed between the benches. He had a headshot here. There was lots of blood and he had brain matter there. Oh, and so I got him. There's a helicopter coming in to get him. Uh, so uh, I got people there really helpful. I got Is there him only up one on the bench. Shot that you saw? Then I did CPR, did chest compressions as well as I breathed for him. One person. Okay. I was the only one that did it. Let's start right away with Donald Trump's speech at the RNC. I've made a little clip video that I will be putting on social media as well. But Trump took the stage at the RNC. He quoted, I am running to be president of all America, not half of America. This is why I've always kind of really got along definitely with Donald Trump's message because it's exactly what I've said when I ran for office. I'm not running for just the Republicans. I'm running for all citizens. That's the important thing that people forget when they run for office, that they are running to represent everyone, not just some. And I wish our current person running for governor here in North Carolina understood that. Because when you tell people, and everybody will cheer, when you tell people, that the other side won't compromise, they won't compromise, they won't back down, so we're not going to compromise, we're not going to back down. That's not how things happen. That's not how America was started. America was founded on the Great Compromise by founders of very different religions, very different creeds, very different ideas that work together for a common goal to make this America great. And that's what we can do with Donald Trump. Donald Trump officially accepted the Republican nomination for president at the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. In his speech, he addressed an assassination attempt for the first time publicly in promoting a message of national unity. 
Here are some key moments from Trump's speech, the opening appeal for unity. Trump began his one hour and 45 minute speech. I know it because I woke up, I got to sleep, I had to be at work with night shift. I woke up, I was like, I'll watch his speech, it'll be a little while. It went on until it's time for me to go to work. I'm like, luckily it was time for me to go to work and I was able to like, hey, and I was able to analyze it a little bit this morning until the internet went down. That's another story altogether. But, uh, quote, Trump said, The discord and division in our society must be healed. As Americans, we are bound together by a single fate and a shared destiny. We rise together or we fall apart. I am running to be your president of the America, not half of America. So tonight, with faith and devotion, I proudly accept your nomination for president of the United States. Now here's talk about the assassination attempt. Trump candidly spoke about the assassination attempt. He said, I will tell you exactly what happened, and you'll never hear it from me a second time because it actually is too painful to tell. Secret Service. He says, the bullets were continuing to fly as very brave Secret Service agents rushed to the stage. These are great people at great risk. I will tell you and pounced on top of me and so I would be protected. There will be blood, there was blood pouring everywhere, and yet, in a certain way, I felt very safe because I had God on my side. And before I move on, let me tell you, I've had a lot of people complaining about the young lady, or a woman that was a Secret Service detail. They were complaining about DEI picks and things like that. I understand the hate about what put on. I understand how people are upset about how they let this happen, there's conspiracy about it, but to attack this one woman who literally put, even though she's shorter than Donald Trump, put herself between a bullet and Donald Trump, to attack her is wrong, and we should not be doing that. We should not be falling into those absolute bad things, and it makes us look bad at the end of the day. Attacking DEI, I understand in a way, but we do need to break it down. Diversity, inclusion, equity, there's nothing wrong with that. It's the way it's managed. So let's move on. The crowd. Trump praised the crowd's reaction. He said, this massive crowd of tens of thousands of people stood by and didn't move an inch. I watched the videos. Yeah, they freaked out, but they didn't move an inch. In fact, I knew somebody was in the back, right behind Donald Trump. Uh, I think his name is Benny, and he... I see him at the uh, at the C, uh, uh, CPAC, and he has curly hair and his little fedora. And watch the videos right back to the back left. He stood there, strong, stood dead. I don't think he he like ducked, stood there. I was like, oh my god, I know that guy. Um, in fact, many of them bravely but automatically stood up, looking for where the sniper would be. Nobody ran, and by not stampeding, many lives were saved. For the rest of my life, I will be greatly full for the love shown by the giant audience of patriots. Now, chills. Trump confessed, I'm not supposed to be here tonight. And Trump chanted, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Trump responded, I stand before you in the arena only by the grace of Almighty God. And then there was a tribute to Fire Chief Corey Compertor. On the next stage next to Trump stood a tribute to Fire Chief Corey Compator, the one rally attendee killed by the sniper featuring his helmet and his jacket. Corey's bravery, Trump said, he was a highly respected former fire chief, respected by everyone, was accompanied by his wife, Helen. Incredible woman. I spoke to her today. Devastated and two precious daughters. He lost his life selflessly, acting as a human shield to protect them from flying bullets. He went on over the top of them and was hit. What a fine man he was. More chills. Trump then walked to the memorial for Corey and kissed the helmet as the crowd chanted, Corey, Corey, Corey. And I know they had a moment of silence, too, and as quiet as can be. I said it prayed as well. And then Donald Trump talked about money raised. Trump shared that $6.3 million has been raised for Corey's family, along with the families of another two men injured by the shooter. And Donald Trump actually pulled out another check he got 
I don't know if it was part of the 6.3, another million dollar check given for them. I'm sure, hopefully the left will leave it alone and try to not say that Donald Trump's funneling money or some bull crap like that. The money will get to where it needs to go. Because uh, we're the Republican Party, not the Democrats who funnel money through Ukraine and everything. So policy and Biden. The speech also covered policy, contracting, uh, contrasting Trump's record against the last four years under Joe Biden. Trump made an unscripted comment. He says, if you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States, added them up, they would not do the damage that Biden has done. It's not over because Biden's not out yet. He immediately checked himself saying, I'm not going to use the name anymore. Just one time. And I think he did. In the closing words, Trump concluded, we are Americans. Ambition is our heritage. Greatness is our birthright. And just like our ancestors, we must now come together. America's future will be bigger, better, bolder, brighter, happier, stronger, freer, greater, and more united than ever before. And quite simply put, we will very quickly make America great again. Now, here's my opinion. This wasn't an RNC convention. It was a MAGA convention. The speakers represented the diverse coalition that Donald Trump was worked hard to build. I know it was controversial. You had people like Amber Rose and other people who were controversial on stage. You had a lot of gay Republicans. You had a lot of black Republicans. Social conservatism wasn't on the table as much this year. The MAGA agenda was actually changed. Or the RNC agenda, the national agenda was changed. It dropped things like abortion. It dropped things like gay marriage. It dropped a lot of social issues. I'm hoping that locally, this is a personal note, I'm hoping that in North Carolina, that we can change the North Carolina agenda to get rid of this marriage between man and a woman because it's been said by the Supreme Court, we should be believing by the Supreme Court. Supreme Court has recognized it. It's a done deal. I know it was decided by the states at first, but it's become a federal thing. It's important. Marriage between two people who love each other. There's nothing wrong with that. And we're supposed to be about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So North Carolina needs to drop that off their platform and start living like the national platform. And I don't want to hear that argument. And I'll do what I can to try to get that removed from the platform. Because it's important. The audience mirrored the joyful camaraderie many of us experienced while attending a Trump rally. This RNC had felt more like a local pub than a country club. It was the coronation of Trump's populist America First takeover of the Republican Party. And maybe that's why they tried to kill him before it could happen. And I'll have a compilation video that once I edit everything will play right after this. So stay tuned for more Go Right News right after this sizable clip of his speech. We'll be right back. Tragically, the shooter claimed the life of one of our fellow Americans, Corey Comparator. Unbelievable person, everybody tells me. Unbelievable. 
and seriously wounded. Two other great warriors spoke to them today, David Dutch and James Copenhaver. Two great people. I also spoke to all three families of these tremendous people. Our love and prayers are with them and always will be. We're never going to forget them. They came for a great rally. They were serious Trumpsters, I want to tell you. They were serious Trumpsters and still are. But Corey, unfortunately, we have to use the past tense. He was incredible. He, he was a highly respected former fire chief, respected by everybody. He was accompanied by his wife, Helen, incredible woman I spoke to her today, devastated, and two precious daughters. He lost his life selflessly acting as a human shield to protect them from flying bullets. He went right over the top of them and was hit. What a fine man he was. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for others. This is the spirit that forged America in her darkest hours. And this is the love that will lead America back to the summit of human achievement and greatness. This is what we need. Despite such a heinous attack, we unite this evening more determined than ever. I am more determined than ever, and so are you. So is everybody in this room. We will not break, we will not bend, we will not back down, and I will never stop fighting for you, your family, and our magnificent country. Never. And everything I have to give with all of the energy and fight in my heart and soul, I pledge to our nation tonight. Thank you very much. I pledge that to our nation. I'm going to turn our nation around and we're going to do it very quickly. Thank you. This election should be about the issues facing our country and how to make America successful, safe, free, and great again. In an age when our politics too often divide us, now is the time to remember that we are all fellow citizens. We are one nation under God. But I'm thrilled to have a new friend and partner fighting by my side, the next Vice President of the United States, the current Senator from Ohio, J.D. Vance, and his incredible wife, Usha. He's going to be a great vice president. He's going to be great. He'll be with this country and with this movement, greatest movement in the history of our country. Make America great again. When they criticize it, they say, we're going to try and stop MAGA. I said, MAGA is making America great again. What are you going to stop? There's nothing to stop. <laughs> then they say, oh, that's right. It's very tough to fight it. And all of the people that did try and fight it have failed. I will end the devastating inflation crisis immediately, bring down interest rates, and lower the cost of energy. We will drill, baby, drill.
Can you believe what they're doing? First, we must get economic relief to our citizens. Starting on day one, we will drive down prices and make America affordable again. We have to make it affordable. It's not affordable. People can't live like this. Under this administration, our current administration, groceries are up 57 percent, gasoline is up 60 and 70 percent, mortgage rates have quadrupled. And the fact is, it doesn't matter what they are because you can't get the money anywhere. You can't buy houses. Young people can't get any financing to buy a house. The total household costs have increased an average of $28,000 per family under this administration. Republicans have a plan to bring down prices and bring them down very, very rapidly by slashing energy costs. We will, in turn, reduce the cost of transportation. At the center of our plan for economic relief are massive tax cuts for workers that include something else that's turned out to be very popular, actually. Here it's very popular, in this building and all those hotels that I saw that are so nice. I'm staying in a nice one. It's called No Tax on Tips. No Tax on Tips. No Tax on Tips. 107% of those jobs are taken by illegal aliens. And you know who's being hurt the most by millions of people pouring into our country? The black population and the Hispanic population, because they're taking the jobs from our black population, our Hispanic population, and they're also taking them from unions. The unions are suffering because of it. Thank you. Thank you. I like you, too. Thank you very much. Taxpayer dollars that is fueling the inflation crisis. They've spent trillions of dollars on things having to do with the Green News scam. It's a scam. And that's caused tremendous inflationary pressures in addition to the cost of energy. And all of the trillions of dollars that are sitting there not yet spent, we will redirect that money for important projects like roads, bridges, dams, and we will not allow it to be spent on meaningless green new scam ideas. Under President Bush, Russia invaded Georgia. Under President Obama, Russia took Crimea. Under the current administration, Russia is after all of Ukraine. Under President Trump, Russia took nothing. Things on day one, right? Drill, baby, drill, and close our borders. Legally. Less than four years ago, I handed this administration the strongest border in American history. But you can see on the chart that saved my life. That was the chart that saved my life. I said, look it, I'm so proud of it. I think it's one of the greatest. It was done by the Border Patrol. One of the greatest charts I've ever seen. It showed everything just like that. You know the chart. Oh, there it is. That's pretty good. Wow. <laughs> Last time I put up that chart, I never really got to look at it. But without that chart, I would not be here today. Never got to look. But if the events of last Saturday make anything clear, it is that every single moment we have on Earth is a gift from God. We have to make the most of every day for the people and for the country that we love. The attacker in Pennsylvania wanted to stop our movement, but the truth is the movement has never been about me. It has always been about you. It's your movement. It's the biggest movement in the history of our country by far. Win, 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 win. Nothing will sway us. 
Nothing will slow us, and no one will ever stop us. No matter what dangers come our way, no matter what obstacles lie in our path, we will keep striving toward our shared and glorious destiny, and we will not fail. We will not fail. fifth president of the United States hoping to be the 47th president of the United States accepting his party's nomination in a lengthy speech filled at times with a lot of ad-libbing that felt at the end like one of his campaign rally speeches but at the beginning started in a very different way a very reflective way a very somber way Dreams 
Bye. 